Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to take a look at the ellipse in a more standard fashion. So here's the basic theory about ellipses. The standard equation still is x minus h quantity squared divided by a squared plus y minus k quantity squared divided by b squared equals 1. And assumption is that a is greater than b is greater than 1. Oh, not 1, but 0. Should be positive. 0. But a being larger than b simply means that the ellipse will be sideways instead of vertical. Secondly, notice where the center is located at. The center is located at h and k, which are these two numbers right here. Also notice that this is the minor axis and this is the major axis. These are the vertices, the two vertices of the major axis, the two vertices of the minor axis. And so notice that the vertex here on the right side of the major axis is h plus a, so h is the center. A would be the distance from the center to the vertex right here, so h, h plus h, and k would be, the, of course, the y value of that coordinate. Here, the vertex is h minus a, and k being the y coordinate of that vertex. And then, oop, here I'm missing a parenthesis right there. Here you can see that the coordinates of this is h, which is the same as the x value for the center of the ellipse, and k plus b, this distance here is b, and here it would be h, and k minus b, this distance here also being b. Now an ellipse also has foci, so there's the focus on the left, there's the focus on the right, and the position of the focus can be found by taking h, which is the coordinate, the x-coordinate of the center, plus c, this distance here is c, and we'll get into a moment just what c is, and of course the vertical distance uh, that still would be k, and over here this focus is h minus c, this distance here is c, and of course k would be the y-coordinate at that location. Now c here is equal to a squared minus b squared, a squared being this number right here, b squared being that number right there, and so c simply is the square root of a squared minus b squared, assuming of course that a is bigger than b, so this is always a positive number. Now notice, what happens when a becomes equal to b? Well, if a is equal to b, then this will then simply go over here, and then this becomes the equation of a circle. Well, if a is equal to b, then a squared minus b is equal to zero, and then of course the foci will then come in and be right at the center, and that means we have a circle, which means that the foci of an ellipse go to the center if the ellipse becomes a circle, and that makes sense. Now, what if the what if a is much, much bigger than b? Well, then you get a very flat in the ellipse. The ellipse becomes very long, and you can see that c will just become a much bigger number when a becomes much, much bigger than b. So that gives you a pretty good feel for an ellipse, all the various important points on an ellipse. It gives you the center, it gives you the four vertices, the minor axis, the major axis, the distance from the center to the vertex, vertex is, defi is defined by A in the horizontal direction, by B in the vertical direction, and that the focus is simply a measure of how flattened out the ellipse is. If the foci are very close to the edge of the ellipse, then it's a very flattened out ellipse. If the foci comes very close to the center of the ellipse, then the ellipse becomes much more closely resembling a circle. And again, C is equal to A squared minus B squared. When they become equal, you have a circle. When they're slightly different from each other, it's just slightly off from being a circle. If A is much, much bigger than B, then of course it's a very flat in the ellipse. So hopefully that gives you a good feel for what an ellipse is, all the parameters, and now we're going to show you some examples of how to utilize this information to graph ellipses. We'll be back with the next video.